as you can see, I'm getting back to my roots. I'm going back into some microphones that I've used in the past and giving you guys some perspective on some microphones that you can run into as a content creator early on and further in the future because this one right here, it, it can last a long time if you know how to use it right. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video we're going to be revisiting the AT2020 and revamping that original video and going into the details, the specs, the tech, everything about it again, but this time we're doing it a little bit more professional because I owe it to you guys to give you a more professional video of these older videos that I was just figuring it out then and now I feel comfortable to come back to it and make them bigger, better and something that you guys can look at in the future without worrying about some type of silly technical thing that I had an issue with before. But before we get started, if you have any questions, comments or anything whatsoever about the AT2020 gear, tech, content, anything whatsoever, please leave it down in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have about all that stuff and please just make it positive, that's all I ask. If you want to ask me more directly, I stream on this channel every Wednesday and Saturday, 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I start uh, Eastern Time American and uh, talk about tech, talk about gear, have a good time, listen to music, play video games, all that stuff. I do an hour on here doing dot to dot art and then I switch over to Twitch where I play video games and talk to you guys and all that stuff. And of course, if you found this video helpful, entertaining or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. So let's talk about the build and since we just saw how good it looks despite its rough lookingness because I I really put it through the ringer I feel bad but not too bad <laughs> so we're gonna talk about the build how this thing is put together it's a simple black design as I've said in the past uh, nice grill and the classic audio technical look uh, I love the simple look it really goes a long way and of course I enjoy flashy tech I enjoy the the extravagant things but there's something special about simple the other big thing that stands out with audio technica microphones for me at least is the XLR port that sticks out it's outside of the body unlike the Personas PD70 or the pod mic they have internal XLR ports it's not a big deal but I feel like it's more sturdy it's a separate housing and I feel like it's more sturdy at least in my opinion I could be wrong but I, at least in my experiences it is more sturdy I feel like it's more reliable at least in my opinion next up let's get into the dimensions and the weight so the AT2020 is weighing in at about 12.1 ounces or 345 grams for my international groups. So as far as the weight, not that heavy. It's You can handle this thing with your hand. You can throw it on a stand and not have to worry about it sagging. It's a very light microphone. There's nothing to it. Uh, and just because it's light doesn't mean that you can't give it some handling of it like obviously i have some battle scars on mine is because it, i work with it i move it around it gets bumped every once in a while so it, it can handle a beating too because it's fully metal next up let's get into the dimensions the at2020 has a 6.38 inch length which is also 162 millimeters 
And then the maximum body diameter is 2.05 inches, which is also 52 millimeters. So that's it on the build and uh, the dimensions. It's very simple, like I said. There's not much to this microphone. It's a bare bones, no switches, no nothing uh, condenser microphone, which is something that people love about it because you can plug and play a lot of times. Of course, you need an audio interface or an audio recorder, but it's really essentially plug and play. So next up, we're gonna get into a section that I like to call techie talk, which is all the specs, all the tech and things like that. And uh, I'm gonna go through a lot of the specs, but I'm really gonna emphasize the important ones. So that you guys understand what really matters when it goes into what goes into a microphone and what you're going to expect from this microphone based on those specs. So the first couple of things, it's a condenser microphone, which means it needs phantom power and 48 volts to be more specific. There are other variables in the phantom power world, but 48 volts is pretty standard and that's what this microphone needs. As I mentioned before, it's a cardioid polar pattern. So it has that heart shape like, like this, and then it kind of tapers off in the back there. Next up, we have a sensitivity of negative 37 decibels, an impedance of 100 ohms, a max SPL of 144 decibels and 20 dB of noise. So all those are really explaining how this microphone can handle noise and the amount of input, the amount of uh, electrical noise you will expect from this microphone naturally. So now let's put up the frequency response curve. And I've said this uh, a lot and I know that it can be annoying for me saying something a lot. The frequency response curve is the most important thing in a microphone because it shows you how the microphone is tuned. I should have that as a sound bite on my stream. I'm not going to go into the whole frequency response but I'm going to go through the pros and the cons of what I love and what I not so love about it. So the pros, as you can see in this frequency response, it's a fairly flat midsection, which is good for spoken word. Most of our voices land right in that midsection. The other thing I like about the frequency response is the presence in the high end. It's got some nice boosts in the high end. Nothing crazy, but for this quality and this style of microphone, uh, and I'm going to mention this a lot, for the price, it's nice. Now on to a couple of cons. I, I feel that and I noticed this when I did my AT2020 versus the AT4040 video. I noticed the AT2020, comparatively speaking, it was a little bit flat. It sounded a little bit flat. Of course, this can be fixed in, e in the EQ section of your uh, your DAW, and it could be brought back to life, make it, make it a little bit more bright, give some texture to it, uh, but it takes a little bit of work. And people use this microphone long after their uh, a beginner and they get the most out of it. I've seen a lot of YouTubers and I've seen a lot of content creators get a lot out of this microphone. So before you upgrade and think that you're going to get more out of gear or get more out of your content because of the gear that you buy, reconsider and try to get your skills. Your skills will speak louder than the tech that you get a lot of times. The last con is uh, there's no roll off on the low end. So it just kind of just flattens out at the back end there. Not a huge big deal. Like I said, you could do a lot of this in post and you could get a little roll off going in. Right now I'm rolling off about 50 into the Zoom F6. So that's happening right away. Chances are nothing's happening in that 50 lower than 50. Chances are nothing's happening lower than 80. Uh, the AT4040, I believe, has a pa uh, low cutoff at 80, so there's something to consider. Okay, so shutting the music off, let's get a little bit of testing in here. And I have my nice, sexy pop filter on here, and I'm really happy to have this thing because that's the rejection of it. This one reject, if you want a good video on that, uh, Mike Delgadio from Boot Junkies does a whole video on the differences between pop filters, windscreens, all that stuff. So go check that out. And if you want my perspective on it, I could always put out another one. I have a video on plosives, but I feel like that's another video I'm going to redo and uh, give a more educated perspective on it. And as you can see here, significant difference so using this one it might cost you a little bit more and it's a little bit bulky there's a that that was my big thing in that other video i noticed that it gets a lot of these big ones they get in the way and 
unfortunately, to get good quality, sometimes the visual aspect of it takes a hit. But, to be honest, depending on the content, like, for example, this video is about the AT2020. It's not about my face. So I could cover my face a little bit and not have to worry about the content suffering. Not that really my face is the reason why people watch these, these videos anyway. If it is, cool, thanks, I guess. So now, we're in a semi-treated room. There's a little bit of foam on the walls. They really doesn't do much other than uh, maybe take some reverberations off the walls. But it's a fairly small room. Uh, these blankets that I have rolled up for my booth help a little bit. And the fact that I'm right up on it helps a lot. Speaking of right up on it, let's get up on there and talk about the proximity effect on this thing. And you're probably going to notice that it's a lot lower and significantly more bassy. But if I was to move a little bit further away, a little bit further than last time, we're about a foot away right now. This is what you're going to hear. Chances are, if you're using this microphone about a foot away, you're asking for a little bit of trouble. You're going to get a little more noise of the room and things like that. The next thing I'm going to get into is how it reacts to audio off-axis. So, as I said in the beginning, cardioid polar pattern. It picks it up right around here, this night wheel bubble. And we want to go around to show you how it rejects it. And I'm going to try to stay between 6 inches to about a foot away while I'm going around. So you got an idea of how that rejection is going to be. So if you have a keyboard going on, if you got a fan going on, obviously my voice is going to be probably louder than uh, those subjects. So keep this in consideration. So we're going around the, the left side, stage left, I guess. And that's what you're going to hear. This is about 90 degrees, 6 to 12 inches away. Other side, about the same. This is what you're going to hear in, in relation to the front there. And then right behind it, right here, this is what you're going to hear. It's, it probably shouldn't be that loud. It shouldn't be that bad. Uh, maybe some reverberation off the flat wall there, but nothing crazy. So that's what you're going to deal with there. And this is a pretty standard room for someone making content. All right, so we have the AT2020 in the untreated room, uh, just like my Rode PodMic uh, redo video, revamped video. Uh, we're going into different environments and giving you a good example of what you're going to experience with these microphones in an area where you might not have the choice of where you film or where you record. Um, like I said in that video, this room is about 20 by 12, roughly, uh, in feet, and it's not treated in any way. There's a couple of chairs with some soft surfaces on them, but other than that, we got flat walls, we got some glass, we got cabinets, so a lot of reflective surfaces. And what I did in that video, uh, the Rode Pod Mic video, is I clapped, and you have a lot of reflection off the walls. And you notice that it's just... I, I don't even have to listen to it to, in the microphone to realize that it's rough on the ears. And especially being a condenser microphone that is more sensitive to sound and picks up more of the higher frequencies, uh, some of the lows, but it's more prominent in that high end. And I'm talking off axis to it right now, so if I get a little bit closer and talk straight into it like this, you're gonna notice that maybe the sound of the room is a little less apparent, but it's still a problem because you still have a lot of echo here. If you are in a situation like this, maybe putting an area rug underneath you will help, but still you have the other surfaces to worry about. But a rug will certainly help. Next up, we're gonna do some uh, silence and just hear what the microphone hears naturally without any speaking or noise.
All right, so there's a little bit of uh, natural noise from the room. You around the corner, we have the kitchen with the refrigerator going off. So you're probably going to hear that a little bit more than you would with a dynamic microphone or something that is less sensitive. Okay, so we're in the booth with the AT2020, and this is probably a scenario where you're going to be using this uh, in a lot of scenarios. Like if you're a person who wants to do voiceover work, if you want to be doing uh, singing or some type of performance that needs a controlled environment, this is where you're going to use this. And this microphone has a lot of flexibility with how you can get the most out of it. Sure, naturally it might sound a little flat, but it, it, it's very moldable. I, I say this in a couple of videos that it's a very moldable uh microphone and what i mean by that is you can mold it into a lot of different sounds and you could give some presence boost in the low ends and the high ends and maybe cut out some of the mids if it comes off a little muddy or something like that so these scenarios where you can uh get a controlled environment like my hundred dollar booth if you haven't seen that go check that out i built this booth with some sound blankets or moving blankets really so now we're going to do a 30 second or so uh, test of quietness and just be a little quiet and see what you hear naturally with the microphone. All right, so you probably noticed that there was maybe a little bit of a hiss, but nothing too crazy. I actually caught it at a good moment where no one was moving around the house. All right, so that's the AT2020 uh, doing a revamped version of this video. It's very nice. Uh, different scenarios, different environments. We have the studio environment, the booth environment, and the untreated room environment. A uh, theme that's going to be going through uh, the future videos and... Uh, I might revisit a couple other microphones in those three scenarios. Uh, if you've seen my other mic reviews, you've seen that I use these microphones in all types of scenarios. Uh, the Octava, the Sennheiser MK416, uh, the Rode Pod mic, the PD70, all these microphones I'm trying to use in all these types of scenarios and environments. So you guys understand what you're getting into and maybe if you are in a situation where you're in that untreated room or if you're in a semi-treated room you'll have a good idea of what you're going to hear and how this microphone or how these microphones perform in those scenarios so thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it if you liked that video please hit the like button down below and uh, consider subscribing for more videos like this more videos about mics tech gear more zoom f6 stuff coming out uh we're coming up on i think uh, the next one i put out is going to be number 10 on the zoom f6 or so like there's been about 10 videos on the Zoom F6. I really enjoy using that. I'm using it right now, actually. And, of course, if you have any comments about gear, tech, or anything whatsoever, the AT2020, microphones in general, please leave it down in the comment section down below. And if you want to ask me more directly, I stream now on Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, I'm trying to do an earlier stream because the late night streams, I feel like I'm lacking in energy. So uh, I want to do a little earlier, maybe around midday. So if you're interested in that, go give me a follow over on Twitch. I do an hour on this channel, do some dot art and uh, just drawing and stuff and listening to music, answering questions, talking to you guys. And then I switch over to Twitch where I play video games and do just about the same thing. It's a good time uh, hanging out, listening to stream beats. Highly recommend that. Copyright free music. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. As always, be safe, be kind. If you go out, please wear a mask and I'll see you in the next video. Evie, don't, don't do me like that. Don't, don't give the, the twerking. Don't be twerking on Big Ben. Stop twerking on Big Ben. Stop it. Good God, girl. I'm all about if you got it, shake it, but come on, man.